Bromeliaceae is a diverse plant family native to tropical and subtropical America, with species ranging from deserts to rainforests. The family includes both terrestrial and epiphytic species, or air plants, which grow on trees in the forest canopy, deriving nutrients from the air through absorbent leaf structures called trichomes. In pre-Hispanic societies of Mesoamerica, bromeliads played a special role in many religious customs, some of which survive today, having persisted through transformations and mixture with European traditions. In the humid montane forest region of central Veracruz, Mexico, the Arco Floral, or Floral Arch, is one such example of a relic ceremonial offering constructed with bromeliads. While the precise origins of the floral arch in this region are uncertain, the Franciscan monks described this celebratory practice by natives here as early as the 16th century. Today, floral arches are raised at churches on Catholic feast days and symbolize the interrelationship with nature, life, and spirituality. The actual elaboration of a floral arch begins weeks in advance with the collection of plant materials. I begin my research by participating in collection trips interested in the bromeliad harvesting and management techniques of arch builders. I found that very little management exists. Collectors climb trees and use long poles to knock down the plants, often taking with them many other bromeliads and orchids in addition to immature plants. This in combination with the rapid increase in number of floral arches has led to growing scarcity and has forced arch builders to seek new bromeliad populations for exploitation. Some, however, are adopting new techniques such as cutting just the inflorescence, shown here. The white, spoon-shaped leaf base of cucharilla, or soto, is the other main material used to adorn floral arches and comes from the far side of the mountains in the state of Puebla. Here, a collector harvests a large head of cucharilla. While locally abundant on these rocky hills, many arch builders note the declining number of large plants suitable for harvest. Extensive exploitation is concerning due to the species' slow growth and low rate of reproduction. La Silurian acrotriche is endemic to Mexico and is listed as threatened with extinction. Every floral arch is unique and begins with a design planned by the group leader. First, the arch structure is built, beginning with a heavy frame of liquid amber or pine and topped with a fine lattice of poles. Carrizo, or arundo donax, is a pole grass traditionally used, though it has been over-harvested and hence replaced in some areas by bamboo. Several species of woody vines, or bejucos, are then used to create figures and designs over the lattice base. Where vines have disappeared, some people now use plastic hosing. Here, men are drying and preparing pita, a fiber traditionally used to tie plants to the arch structure, though today twine and nails are more commonly used. Meanwhile, the bromeliad leaves and inflorescences are removed and rinsed in preparation for use. Pine and cypress have largely replaced bromeliad leaves for convenience. Here, the leaves of cucharilla are peeled and later their spines are removed to facilitate handling. Finally begins the time-consuming process of decorating the arch with red bromeliad inflorescences, green and purple leaves, and white cucharilla. Many people come to admire the craftsmanship of the artisans, who are highly respected for their devotion reflected in their long hours of labor. Work is voluntary and all of the expenses for the arch are donated through collections in the community organized by elected religious leaders or mayordomos. For my Fulbright research, I have set about to investigate how the harvesting of bromeliads for floral arches has affected wild populations. Most accounts of experienced arch builders indicate that years of exploitation have significantly diminished the populations of some species in the region. Furthermore, one important species, Tulancia imperialis, shown in this arch, is listed as threatened with extinction in Mexico. I hypothesize that the harvesting of thousands of individuals per year of this and other Tulancia species has led to a decline in reproduction via both seeds and vegetative offshoots. <laughs> Thank you.
It is important to note that the primary threat to bromeliads has and continues to be habitat destruction. In central Veracruz, an estimated 90% of original montane cloud forest has been converted to alternate land uses. Many species of bromeliads persist, however, in shade coffee farms, such as here. I began my research with a population study of Tilantia leboliana, another rare and heavily exploited species. In order to reach my study species, I must climb trees using mountaineering equipment. Here, my field assistant Miguel uses a large slingshot to set the line in a secure branch. Ironically, this can be the most challenging step of all. Once the weight has passed the branch and is untangled from other obstacles, we can attach our climbing rope to the line and pass it back over the branch, securing it at the trunk base. Now I begin to climb. Once in the canopy, I locate several branch sections within reach where I can measure all of the individuals of Tilantia leboliana. In addition to measuring the height and diameter of the plants, I take measurements of distance above ground, canopy openness, and the diameter, inclination, and direction of the branch or trunk. I am particularly interested in the origin of individuals, whether from seed or vegetative offshoot, because many species of bromeliads are heavily dependent on vegetative reproduction for persistence. I am conducting this study in harvested and unharvested populations of Tilantia leboliana. When I complete fieldwork, I will compare the population structure and within canopy distribution of the populations to analyze the impact of harvesting on the species and develop management recommendations. In addition, I have several small experiments running with cultivation and transplanting of harvested bromeliad individuals. The floral arch represents an important element of identity in central Veracruz. The conservation and sustainable use of bromeliads is therefore essential for the maintenance of biological and cultural heritage in the region. Si se acaba la planta, se acaba la fiesta.